Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby. I'm with Fitness is Medicine. Today I'm going to give you another great workout you can do in your home, very little equipment, and very small space. So remember to always come into these workouts warmed up and ready to move, five to ten minutes of a cardio workout. Of course you can do more, but at least do that so you can get your muscles warmed up, your heart rate up, and your mind in the space ready to move. So we are going to start today on a fit ball with a set of dumbbells. If you don't have a fit ball, you can do this on the floor or on a bench, um, preferably on the floor while you're holding a bridge. So on your back with your hips lifted, um, we are going to do a bridge on a ball. So walk on out so your hips are raised. There's a flat surface between your knees and your the top of your head. I want your head and shoulders resting comfortably on top of the ball. Now we're going to take these dumbbells and press them up alternating as an alternating chest press. The reason why this is challenging is I want you to stay stable on top of this ball as you hold that bridge. You may notice the tendency to kind of want to roll back and forth just a little bit, really engage that core, engage those glutes, keep those hips nice and high. Now you can keep your hands in like this or you can bring it up to the side. Whichever is most comfortable on your shoulders and elbows. Let's do two more. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure you stay stable on top of that ball. You're going to want to, it's going to shift you a little bit, pushing one weight up at a time. And that's, that's the goal is to really make that core have to work in addition to your pecs and your triceps in that exercise. All right, set that weight down. Um, the next exercise I'm going to have you do is something you can either do seated on a ball or you can sit on a stable surface like a bench or a kitchen chair or anywhere where you're sitting in about a 90 degree angle here. We are going to do knee extensions. So this is not, um, you know, a really challenging exercise as far as squats. Hello, 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 hello. Baloo came to say hello. Um, but it's a really good way to get a good quad contraction um, if you are having knee pain or if you're having hip pain or if you're having uh, difficulty with, you know, any, any sort of squat or lunge or, you know, maybe more advanced exercise. And this is also something you can do um, anytime, anywhere. You know, if you're sitting there and you want to just move your legs a little bit, I challenge you to, if you are going to be able to do it on a ball, it's a good chance to engage your core too and get a little balance training in. But hold up that knee extension and really feel that quad contract. So you can even put your hand right on there. Think about recruiting as many muscle fibers as you can from that quadricep. Get a good, strong knee extension, breathe. Then also we're sitting up nice and tall here. I don't want you to tuck under, sit up nice and tall. And I want this to be slow and controlled. I don't want it to just be a kick. So slow, really contract that quad and release. Now it may be tempting to want to put ankle weights on or something, but sometimes that can aggravate the knee as well. So just working on a good quad contraction. I mean, you can do this in the airport when you're waiting for your plane. You can do it, um, you know, at your desk if you're working a little bit and you just want to move your legs a little. Uh, it's a good way to bring some blood flow to your quadriceps, but really just focus on a good squeeze and relax. Okay. If you're doing it out of all, great. It's another chance to do a little extra core and some stabilization. Next, we are going to use this bench that I have here. Um, and we're going to do some dips. Now, there's a few different ways to do these. This is a big triceps exercise and shoulders. So you want to be careful of your shoulders. If you do have any shoulder pain, one, another way you could do it is grab yoga blocks and put them right next to you. Or you could use a big armchair and push up just like we're going to do. You know, the goal is to lift your body weight up. So I'm just pushing on my 
fists here, which also can work if you have a stable surface. Um, but you can hold onto dumbbells and push up so you have a little more raised surface. Yoga blocks work really well, stick them right next to your hips. If you're ready for a little more challenge than that, we'll try a dip. So the goal is to drop your hips off the side of the bench and then come back up. Try that to begin with. Now I want your knees bent because the closer your knees are to you, the closer your feet are to you, the easier this will be. That's the lighter lever, the smaller, uh, shorter lever. You want to keep your back as close to this bench as you can to minimize the stress on the shoulder joint. Also, don't let those shoulders go up. So we're keeping those shoulders down. And then if you can do one, see if you can do a couple before you come back up to seated. If this feels relatively easy and you aren't having any pain, you can stretch your feet out a little further, even to the point where you've got them straight out. Breathing, push straight up, keep your back. You almost want to be scraping that bench with your back and keeping your shoulders down away from your ears. Two more. All right, good. Rest. That's a big triceps exercise. Well, again, you can start with dumbbells or yoga blocks. Maybe try just dropping your hips off the edge once. Um, if you don't have a bench like this, you can use a coffee table. Uh, you can use a sturdy kitchen chair. There's a lot of different ways you can um, do that exercise. Okay, uh, push this back out of the way. And we're going to use a loop band and um, just another TheraBand or a tube or something. If you don't have a loop band, you can just wrap one around your ankles. Um, we're going to put, we'll put them around your ankles here. We're going to do some side stepping for some hips. So with this side stepping, make sure this is flat around your ankles so it feels, uh, it doesn't hurt you know, kind of pinch your skin. You want your feet straight forward. Don't let this toe lead out to the side. And then you want your hips about hip width apart or your feet about hip width apart so that you can keep tension on that band. So let's start with that to begin with. We're going to step sideways, just kind of taking baby steps so that you stay, keep your feet about that distance apart. So we'll go about 10 and then we'll come back. Now, if you feel like that's okay, this is a big glute exercise. Keeping those toes straight forward, don't let this go out to the side. You can look at it, but then I want your posture tall. Also, notice that I'm in a little bit of an athletic stance here. My knees are bent, my hips are back. I don't want you doing it straight up like this. A bit of an athletic stance, keeping your tummy engaged. Now, we're gonna add a shoulder external rotation. So hold the band like you're holding a platter. Grasp it, and then as you step, we're gonna pull your arms apart as well. So we'll get a little shoulder stabilization in there as well as your hip stabilization. Keeping your tummy tight, your shoulders pulled back, so we don't wanna be here. Shoulders, shoulder blades in your back pocket, right? Just moving your arms and legs at the same time. So you can go down, and back about 10 times each way. If your shoulders get tired, you can just do one way of your shoulders um, and add more on the next, next time through the circuit. Okay, now we're gonna lo lower down to the floor. Okay, on your back with your feet flat on the floor, knees bent, and your hands beside your hips. We're gonna do penguin abs. So we've done these before, but as a reminder, I want you to think about a rope pulling your chest towards the ceiling so that you're lifting up instead of crunching forward. Also think about keeping your head, keeping it in line with your spine similar so we're not crunching forward and hurting your neck. Okay, we're gonna lift those shoulder blades up off the floor and then reach side to side for our heels. Ready? Take a breath before you start. Breathe. Two, just lifting, reaching side to side. Keep your eyes up. Think about pulling up your chest with that rope. Keep breathing. 
nine, 10 and 10. All right, good. You can stretch out, make yourself as tall as possible on the floor. And then we're going to stand up. So let's do it as slowly as you need to. Come on over to your hands and knees. Let your blood pressure return to normal. Let all the blood flow return to your head. And we are going to do um, three disc taps. So you can use any type of cones or you can set out three. Um, I've got my dog toys here ready to go for when Baloo comes in. Let's see, I'm gonna move those back a little bit. And I'm just gonna make them into just a little bit of a triangle. So I will stand right in the middle of them. They look like Easter eggs. And on the side where the discs are, I wanna stand on one foot and tap, tap, tap. Oops, I missed it, I gotta put it a little further behind me. So you can start in a small circle or a small little triangle and then make them bigger if you need more of a challenge. You can stand uh, just on the floor or you could stand on a balance pad. You could roll up a towel and stand on it. There's a lot of different ways you can make this more challenging, but start with trying to step, touch, bring it back to center, touch, bring it back to center, touch, bring it back to center. If you need to put, do this at the kitchen counter or something, and you can touch, bring it back, touch, bring it back. So level up or level down there, depending on your um, balance needs, your balance challenges. And then also, if this feels easy to you, you can look around the room you know, different ways you can make it more challenging, but start with, with your hands near a counter. You could also do it next to a wall. If I have a wall right here, I could have that if I were to lose my balance. Okay, I'm just gonna move this over and now we're gonna do the other side. So stand up nice and tall. Also, standing tall, don't look down at your feet. Oops, I got all discombobulated there. All right, tap, tap, tap. Start them close, see how it goes. Also, the slower you go, the more challenging it is. Slow. And I would say do each side for about 30 seconds. Um, you can count if you'd rather. You could do each side, you know, five times or do a whole minute if you would like. This is also a really good hip stabilizer, which you're probably feeling, especially after those side steps. Um, so standing on one leg for a long time, make sure you are standing tall on that hip and not letting that sag into it like that. If you feel yourself doing that, you'll notice that this leg is straight, but this knee leg will have to bend. So stand up tall, hold this hip strong, and start again. If you feel that happening, you can even put your hand there as a guide because if it starts to jut out to the side, you need to stop and then restart. Also, if it does happen to do that, just do a little bit less time on that side, rest, and then try again. So as it's fatiguing, it's not pulling you out. You want to keep strengthening it um, so that you can reduce that happening. If you have that hip weakness, it's more likely for you to not be able to pick up your feet when you're walking and it's a fall hazard. So if you have, if you have that and you need um, some extra instruction or you have um, some pain associated with that or anything, that you, you can message me privately or you can leave a message in the comments and we can address that. Okay, go through these one or two more times, add some cardio in between and overall have a great workout. Thank you everybody.